presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are NC. Tonight, two of the top teams in the American League Central face off as the Royals host the Tigers. Once again, Detroit is doing its damage with offense. Cabrera, Kinsler, and Martinez, along with a new face, Justin Upton, have the Tigers ranked in the top four in the American League in home runs, slugging percentage, and runs scored. On the other side, the Royals have been equally as strong on the mound. They have the fourth best ERA in all of baseball, and the Tigers will have to deal with Ventura, Kennedy, and Volquez in the next three days. Will the KC Arms or the Tiger Bats win this early season AL Central matchup? We'll find out as the series begins right now. Royals baseball back at Kauffman Stadium after a four and three road trip. The Royals are home for six, including three with the Detroit Tigers. And Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. The defending world champions are also the defending AL Central division champions. And prior to that, the Tigers had won the division in four consecutive seasons. And the Tigers believe that they'll be at the top of the division with the Royals all season long. And if they do that, it'll have a lot to do with their offense. We'll talk about that matchup with the Royals pitching when we come back. Discussed at the very top of the broadcast, what will be stronger in this series? Will it be the Royals pitching or will it be the Tigers hitting? That's a great question, Ryan, because most of the time, 
pitching outdoes good hitting, especially this time of year, pitching's usually ahead. But if you look at that Detroit Tigers lineup, one through nine, they are dangerous. Believe me, with the addition of Upton in that lineup, they got more power, but one mistake from a pitcher could turn into multiple runs. But your overall team ERA and the three stars have been magnificent so far that they're going to be facing. If they don't make any mistakes, there is no run scoring. Hope it happens. And the Tigers are going to have to tweak their scouting report for this year's Giordano Ventura. That's right, and it's hard to tweak a nice overhand curveball plus pitch and a plus changeup, but that's what he's throwing more of. He has command with both of those pitches. When you have 95 to 98 mile an hour fastball, that's your pitch, but not anymore. Ventura is a wonderful three pitch mix guy, and he's got skills. Going for his first one of the season tonight. The Tigers have never beaten Giordano Ventura. We'll be right back. Detroit Tigers and for years not only did the Tigers dominate the division they also dominated the season series with the Royals but last year the Royals turned that around it was close with the Royals winning 10 9 but look at the offensive numbers for the Royals against the Tigers the Royals were at their best offensively against Detroit scoring five and a half runs per game they out homered the Tigers believe it or not 24 8 and then as you'd expect they out pitched the Tigers. It is bark at the park. Bring your dog to the oh. ballpark. <laughs> we'll be right back.
Royals are eight and four. The lineups and the first pitch are coming up next. your local Kansas City area Chevy dealers visit for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu by Panera Bread food as it should be with 24 Kansas City Metro locations and by Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff low price every day it is bark at the park it's the first night game bark at the park memory serves me that sound right yeah but look it's a special day whenever you can let your best friend in like that and patrol the K here as long as you bring your little baggie with you everything's good <laughs> here are the Tigers against Giordano Ventura tonight and Justin Upton off to a slow start but the Tigers signed him to a big long term contract during the offseason they have him in the number two spot and that's about as dangerous a uh, one through five in the American League Kinsler Upton Cabrera and then Victor Martinez and J.D. Martinez you got to love it if you're Upton in that number two hole hitting the head of Miguel Cabrera you're going to see some pretty good pitches. Jordano Ventura has never lost to the Tigers he is four and oh and five starts and he has gotten very good run support in those five starts averaging about five runs of support per game and as we talked about earlier in the show tonight. Tigers are going to get a little different look from Jordano Ventura compared to what they've seen in the past. They are. Ventura typically will get his fastball established. He's got a great one. He's going to go, you know, anywhere from 95 to 97 miles an hour on it. But you can see how he's mixing in that change of 26% of the time so far this season. The curveball almost the same. So his secondary pitches have been excellent, and he's throwing those in more predictable. Uh, uh, there's unpredictable accounts like a, a fastball situation he'll break out the change of and that makes him very effective. So it's Ian Kinsler the former MU Tiger. And your.
Giordano Ventura's first pitch of the game is a fastball right over the outside right where Salvador Perez wanted it. A very smooth delivery but when the three pitches come out of that arm I mean it's tough for the hitter to pick up the rotation at the, with that velocity. Back at 97 to make it 0 and 2 and look at some of the overall numbers career against Ventura in this Tigers lineup. You'd be surprised at the Royals. I mean the Ventura's never been beaten by the Tigers because they all have good numbers offensively against him. Kinsler's five for 13. Just outside. I think Ventura has been around long enough to know what Kinsler can do to pitches that are like that on the inner half and on the inside part of the plate because he's dead red pull and he's got plenty of power gets right up on that plate. He's a tough out. Infante Hosmer and Dyson all in pursuit and it's Infante who almost collided with Dyson and then Dyson hits the tarp. Wouldn't you know it the first hitter of the game Gerard Dyson in his first game of the season is is, is really challenged now at the last minute. He backs out of the way. That's important. Obviously, Dyson didn't call him off. Infante stayed with it the whole way. And those plays right there save pitching. Because Kinsler, if, they, if he drops the ball, Kinsler gets another pitch, he hits it out of the park. I mean, you cannot give the Tigers any extra outs with their offense. Good play. Now, Justin Upton, and he's late on the fastball. One home run, one very long home run to center field, and that was in Detroit. Off to a 240 start as he makes the adjustment from the National League to the American League. Jammed him, and now Hosmer into foul ground, and he runs out of room. Well, against the Pittsburgh Pirates, he found a ball out over the middle of the plate, and you know he knew before anybody else. This guy, he's been a uh, prolific power hitter his entire career. But now, he does he does have 20 strikeouts, 451 feet from home plate. Breaking ball strikes him out. That's 21 strikeouts now. And by the way, that leads the American League. Beautiful execution of that pitch. And now Ford gives us a look at the Royals defensively. Gordon, Kane, and Dyson in the outfield. Dyson just called up from his injury rehab assignment. Mustakis, Escobar, Infante, and Hosmer on the infield. And Salvador Perez is behind the plate. Two down to Miguel Cabrera. The Royals sent. Ray Fuentes back to triple A when Dyson came off the disabled list because they want Fuentes to play every day he could stay here and would be mostly on the bench but they want him playing. Yeah and that's important for him keep his rhythm going now sure he wants to accumulate big league service time who doesn't. But if you watch here with Ventura so far the first three hitters behind his fastball fouling balls off in the right field side the pop ups over here to the right side. They're going to try to you know see as many pitches as they can from Ventura to try to get a gauge on him but. You know, if he's getting those secondary pitches over it's going to make it tough on the hitters no question. Change up fades inside two and one. Two for seven in his career. Ventura. Behind the fastball, two and two. Cabrera loves to use the right side. He'll pull only when he has to when a pitch is inside, but anything middle away like this fastball here, he's just going to try to serve it out there to right field. He's a, one of the best hitters the game's seen in a long time. Surefire Hall of Famer if he continues to have health. There's the changeup. So Ventura gets a foul out and back to back strikeouts to get to the Tigers in the top of the first inning. Ooh, man, is he smooth.
in the top of the first inning and now the Royals are coming up with the lineup that Ned Yost had in mind for opening day and that's with Gerard Dyson batting ninth and playing in right field Dyson injured his oblique muscle in his first spring training at bat so he never really had a spring training and now back from triple A Omaha and getting ready to face 27 year old right hander Shane Green and here's our let's motor player profile brought to you by BMW mini as he throws a strike to Alcides Escobar Green last year had a 6.88 earned run average in 18 games and it's only two games and one start this year but feeling a lot better than he was last year. Yeah absolutely and you can tell by the velocity on his fastball. He's up he's like 92 to 94 this season and that's a that's almost two mile an hour faster than he was last year having some issues and writers are going to see a lot of those pitches there two seam sinking fastball he loves his cutter he's got a cutter and slider combination he's going to throw that a lot to righties away to righties and he'll use those two pitches inside to lefties He's got an occasional change up but mainly sinkers and sliders and cutters. Escobar had nine hits during the seven game road trip. Also stole a couple of bases. Breaking ball down and away. Green begins his night with a strikeout. And now look at the Tigers defensively tonight in the outfield. Justin Upton, Anthony Goes, J.D. Martinez, Mike Avilas, the former Royal in his first year with the Tigers, Jose Iglesias, Ian Kinsler, Miguel Cabrera, and Jared Saltalamakia is back of the plate. The Tigers have a couple of significant injuries they're dealing with at the moment as Moustakis takes inside. Moustakis hit two home runs on the trip. He leads the Royals with four. Cameron Mabin, who is going to play center field every day for the Tigers, he had a Gerard Dyson type of injury in his first spring at bat, was hit by a pitch and broke his wrist. So ghosts a good defenders in center field and the Tigers are without their starting catcher Brian McCann who wrecked his ankle running across first base so the veteran Jared Saltalamakia back of the plate yeah, and Bobby Wilson is the backup. But we can already see a pattern that Shane Green's into now he's he righties sliders cutters away everything into lefties. Right center field that ball is down. Mike Moustakis begins the home stand with a one out double. You know you Moustakis has been seeing early in the season pitchers challenging him inside with the fastball. I think it has a lot to do with the success he had last season going to left field. So he's looking in there. Okay, they're going to keep put, pitching him in there until they figure out, you know what? We better go back to away because he's going to hurt you more than that. He's going to go deep. But he's been looking in there, and that whole entire pitches that he saw there, Moose, they were on the inner half. So we'll see if they can make some adjustments on Moose, but in the meantime, they're pitching right into Moose's strength now. Lorenzo Cain had to adjust his shin guard. Okay, there you go. Moose has been a successful left field. That's why he got his average and he got him himself back into the hitter he believes he can always be last season by using it. And now they're saying, okay, let's see if you can pull the ball. Strike to Cain. He drove in five during the trip. Five of his six runs during the road trip. Green also will use a, a curveball, but he doesn't like to show that till second, maybe third time through the order. One and one. Two seam sinkers, sliders, cutters. 
Those are his three main pitches. That's his go to pitch when a runner gets in scoring position. It'd be sliders away, sliders away. Sinkers down and in. Mm, at the inside. That was a cutter or a slider that didn't cut or slide. No, it didn't. And, and Lorenzo Kane was not looking for it there, I can tell you. I, I believe he's looking on the outer half of the plate, but that's a pitch there who we'd like to have back. Kane uses the whole field. They're playing him to opposite field and center. Lorenzo, three for ten with runners in scoring position so far early on, and this is something that the Royals will continue to improve on. They're just hitting 213 as a team. Kinsler went to the bag and was standing on the bag. So Green, with Kane's ability to hit the other way, he would have pitched with one of his fielders completely out of position. And so he backed off. And that's good for Lorenzo because he's looking on that side of the field, I guarantee you. He'll react in. That stayed out over the plate. Hit well to right. J.D. Martinez makes the play. And Moustakis will jog to third. There are two down. So two down. And a runner at third for Eric Hosmer. He has an eight game hitting streak. He has reached base going back to last year in 20 straight games. He's a hot one, that's for sure, and hope he keeps it up. But he's using the entire field. Just like Lorenzo was looking to go to right field, Haas will be looking to go to left. If he gets anything middle away, however, he. He, Green likes to challenge left hand hitters inside, so Haas had to work on pulling that ball a little sooner, or being a little bit quicker with his swing. Inside for ball one, our Toyota League leaders. Hosmer has the longest active streak in the American League, reaching base. J.D. Martinez tied with Shinsu Chu. Only Nick Markakis of the Braves has the longest streak in the major leagues at 24. Out over the plate, and that's fair to Cabrera, and that's the inning. So Green pitched him well inside. Moustakis is stranded at third, and there's no score at the end of one. Royals baseball is brought to you by Ram right now get a great deal during the Ram truck month. 
by T-Mobile. Get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. Park at the park. And word is, unlike other years, this is not going to be the only bark at the park. Don't worry, that game's going to pick up. You'll be all right. Giordano Ventura had an impressive first inning. He got a foul out and then two strikeouts. And now he gets Victor Martinez, J.D. Martinez, and Jared Saltalamacchia. Outside to Victor Martinez, who is coming off the worst season of his major league career. Bothered by a troublesome left knee, which he's had surgery on twice. And this is where he was hurt from the left side of the plate, where he really needed to drive off that left knee, the back knee. Didn't have much trouble from the other side, but the majority of his at bats come from this side of the plate. Yeah, and you know, watching him in the first half of the season, it was just, it was just downright sad. I mean, you know, I was saying, hey, He's got to he's got to take some time and get off of that and get well because you could tell he was limping down the line. I mean sure enough they set him out and he got better and, but he still was not fully recovered. Look what he did two years ago 335 32 home runs over 100 driven in he was second to Mike Trout for American League MVP. And then dropping down to 245 last year. Outside of Kendrys Morales. He's the next best. And he's both sides of the plate, smart, pure hitter. Swinging 3 0. A lot of guys are taking that pitch, but he's confident and he's gotten off to a nice start. 3 and 2. Only played in 120 games. Martinez did last year. Former catcher, so a lot of wear and tear on those knees. Out to right field, well hit. Dyson is at the track, and he has just enough room. Salvi wanted that on the outer half and down, and sometimes when you miss down in that zone there for a left handed hitter, especially of Martinez's stature that's a homer but he was able to beat him on it just enough hits it off the end of the bat and now J.D. Martinez J.D. Martinez had a breakout year two years ago coming out of nowhere after the Tigers Claimed him off of waivers, and then he did even better last year. One ball and one strike. Show now, me. go ahead. Against the Royals, HUD, what he did against KC mirrored what he accomplished two years ago. But look at what Royals pitching did to him last year, and that was a full season. That wasn't a season where he was limited by injuries and only played in a handful of games. No home runs and one RBI all of last year against the Royals. Yeah, and especially what he did against them the year before. They did a great job of pitching him inside. This kid has a wonderful inside out swing. He's really emulated Miguel Cabrera. And there you go, inside out. He goes the other way. Dyson plays it on a hop. And that's the first base runner for the Tigers, Martinez. Is it first with one out as we welcome in Joel Goldberg. Ryan, thanks. Want to take a closer look at Jordano Ventura, our Honda most trusted player. And the first 14 games versus the last 16 last year, what a difference in what he was able to do on the field for the Royals this year. But, guys, I had a conversation the other day with Dave Island, and I pointed out that Jordano looked so poised on the mound in Houston and, and had his emotions in check. 
and Dave reminded me that that was really a maturity and a development they saw the second half of last season. This isn't something new. But he said, keep an eye out for teams like Detroit and maybe the Yankees and Toronto, those veteran teams that are going to do everything they can to step in and out of the box, try to get in his head. So far, so good for Jordano Ventura. Very interesting, Joel. You're right. Astros, home opener. A lot of excitement going on, all that stuff. But then, you know, it's a young team. Veteran team, they might try to slow play him. They might try to do a few things, but I don't think it's going to work. Minnesota, the start for that. Another young team. All right. Fastball by him at 95. When you have three above average pitches, you already have the advantage over the hitter. It's all about location. Doesn't matter if you're a soft tossing pitcher or you throw like Ventura, you still have to be cognizant of the middle of the plate. Watch Salvi. Stay with him. Perfect spot. I've had hitters tell me that you can't pick up the rotation. It's very difficult to, to, to see, and that's what hitters look for to tell what pitch is coming. Ooh, very close. Oh, and we forgot to tell you about his move. Very quick. Now, Eric Hosmer didn't appear to react immediately like he does when he feels like the Royals should take another look at it. Normally, he will immediately look into the dugout. He did not do that this time. Still very close, and the Royals have decided not to challenge. Showing it one time is really all you need to do. Keep those guys closer. Three and two on Saltalamakia. Tigers for a few years had been grooming James McCann to be their everyday catcher, and then this was the year with Alex Avila going to the White Sox, and then McCann rolled his ankle very early in the season. Foul tip, strike three, and three strikeouts for Ventura in an inning and two thirds. Fastball coming in. By the time the hitter picks up that rotation at that velocity, it's too late. That's why it's so tough to hit Ventura. Change ups the only pitch you can really see a little bit of the rotation. I mean, you can see a little bit of it it's spinning, unlike the fastball, that one there. But that's it. I mean, it, and at that velocity, it just doesn't give the hitter much time to decipher. So you're going to see a lot of fastball swinging hitters because they're guessing fastball. It's the straightest one and, and easiest one to hit, even though it's not easy. Avila's checked his swing one ball and one strike Avila's his first year with the Tigers after spending three seasons with the Indians originally a Royal and he's just one for four to begin the season. Chopped out to Hosmer and he has to turn around to get it to Ventura. You had to make a difficult play to get to the bag in front of Avilas. Cool man, Haas taking a little chance there. Normally good with this. Ventura slowed down. Keep going, it's a perfect throw.
Andrews Morales leads off. Kia puts us in the driver's seat. And Morales has done very well against the Tigers in his career, in his past few years, and specifically in his last six games. Batting 528 at bats. And of his 14 hits, six have been home runs. And he's driven in 12. And he had the best single game as far as total bases in Royals history in a game in September at Detroit last year. Inside, two balls and one strike from Green. He had three home runs and a triple and a Royals record 15 total bases. Three balls, one strike. Yeah, I remember that game. It was incredible. Just uh, when, you, when you get in a, a hot zone like that or hitters call it in a tree, man, you, everything looks like a beach ball. Everything's big, and, and, and he showed it that day. Never missed. Full count. Take a look at this. Oh, man, inner half, no doubter. Even, even off the end of the bat, but plenty to get over the 330 sign. You want some opposite field power? You got that too. Inside for a leadoff walk. And then this one here was up, up and away for sure. Two, that's right, three. Yeah, Savi, way to go. Uno, dos, tres. And a triple. I mean, he couldn't hit for the cycle because he couldn't mix in. A single or a double. Horse the loudest. Three home single. runs and a triple. Wins the, where is that when you need it? <laughs> Alex Gordon with Morales at first. And that pitch fades outside for ball one. Alex reached base ten times during the road trip. Seven hits. And three walks. Two and zero. Oh. You know, Green. There's a couple of beautiful ladies there. That, that one's protected very well. Good idea, Mom. The sliders and cutters that he falls in love with, Shane Green. He also changes speeds with him, so he adds and subtracts speed and velocity, which really turns those into different pitches. So to kind of keep an eye as he goes along, how he'll throw one harder and one softer, or, and that's how he keeps him off balance. Chased it out of the strike zone. Two and two on Alex. Good Alex. Nice closed stance. Got him above the zone. Alex better low ball hitter. Full count. Old foul, still three balls and two strikes. Shane Green was first a Yankee. Drafted by them in 2009, got to the big leagues in 2014, and then was traded during the offseason in the deal, a three team trade the Yankees, the Tigers, and the Diamondbacks. That was a deal that sent D.D. Gregorius from Arizona to New York. Back-to-back -back walks. So two on and nobody out for Salvador Perez. All right, let's see how I do here, Hood. Comic-Con fans, join us at the ballpark for the first Planet Comic-Con Kansas City Day, April 24th.
with the Orioles. Your theme ticket comes with a Planet Comic Con theme Royal shirt and a game ticket. Cosplay is also encouraged. So come dressed in the costume of your favorite character. Yeah, great job. A lot okay. better than what I did. Slider for a strike to Salvador Perez. Yeah, you read it better, though. It's a little more enthusiasm with I think, you. you know? I think they're saving me for the, the Zuba read. Yeah. Yeah. Slider, sliders away, occasional sinkers in. So hitter trying to wait him out and look for something out over the middle. Salvi wants to go to the opposite field for a lot of reasons. If you try to pull a guy with a sinker, you're going to hit into a double play. If you if they hit the ball on the ground, but if you keep your hands inside the ball on a pitch middle away, you're going to shoot it that way and you're going to have a tougher time doubling you up and you're going to pick up a ribby. If it's well placed. Had him reaching and he changed speeds on him. Because ball two strikes with with Morales mm. speed at second base and a ball hit right at J.D. Martinez or even ghost in center. Jersh might have to hold up Mar Morales. They all have good throwing arms. See that nice big hole over there on the right side. Salvi's wants to shoot it there. Popped up. Infield fly rule as Kinsler brings it down, one away. And now Omar Infante. He carries an eight game hitting streak into the game tonight. He got a day off on Sunday in Oakland. He hit 333 against the Astros and the A's on the last road trip with Morales here at second base and Gordon at first one down. I remember when Tony Pena was manager of the Royals and this is more from a catcher's perspective but he used to say one day off was a mental break. You needed two days off to truly have a physical break and with the off day yesterday Infantes had two days off in a row. Two balls and no strikes. I'd agree with that. However I, I played once a week. I had five days off so I had <laughs> so you were mentally and physically rested oh, all the time you know, too much so that once a week man it just was not no wonder I didn't stop at a base it was unbelievable it's hard to do all those bases you could have gotten if you were playing every day right <laughs> yeah. you had to get them all in one day uh, let's see if Infante can find a hole here same thing stay inside of it Three and zero. Oh. If, so. if you do pull it, you know, hope you find a hole. But right here, you got to make this young man throw a strike. He's kind of pitching to the same part of the plate, isn't he? he Away is. from righties and into lefties. He's been very predictable ever since the first two hitters. I can tell you, Pat. You could tell the way he was trying to, to uh, set up his hitters. Good movement on a 3-0 pitch. Three and one. That's a nice sinker there. It's going to get a, little, a lot of hitters to hit on the top of that if he, get, if he throws that more consistently. Interesting, a no seam sinker. Yeah. In the left field, but playable for Upton. That may have been ball four. But with two on and one out in the count three and one Infante was looking for a pitch up. And now there are two down. Yeah just hard, hard for a hitter like Infante to hit that out of the park. Yeah, that was a good pitch on Green's part. Little extra ovation for Gerard Dyson who is back from the disabled list. Dyson suffered a right oblique strain with his only swing in spring training. It was the first spring training game against the Rangers. He grounded out to the right side and tweaked the oblique. 
He batted 318 with four stolen bases for AAA Omaha. And he goes the other way for a base hit. Morales going to be waved home on Upton. And the ball got by Salta Lamacchia. Morales was out by a mile. And Salta Lamacchia misplayed it. And then the ball hit home plate umpire Chris Guccione. Gordon goes to third. Dyson goes into second. Mike Churchley, the third base coach, with two outs, he's going to send most any runners. Dyson not waiting at all. He says, man, are you kidding me? I missed all of spring training. First pitch I see, I'm jumping on it. And he did. Morales makes the turn. Upton got it before he even got to third base and was going to be out. Sure enough, the ball hit something, and it kicked up and away up from Salto Lamacchia. Upton, he was sitting right on the line. Almost like he expected Dyson. Watch this ball. See if the fight of the ball. I think he just whiffed it. It looked like to me it hit something and kicked up. And Chris Guccione, home plate umpire, saved possibly another run. Now, sometimes, as you pointed out, you could have a few fans in left field that are sitting next to each other and they all have white t shirts on, and that ball gets his yeah. back dropped by a white t shirt and looked like he just lost sight of it. Yeah, to me, from that angle, that center field camera angle we had there, it looked like he was looking right at it, but maybe he took a peek at Morales. Escobar, not a bad idea with Avila's playing back. It didn't look like it took any kind of a no, unexpected per hop. Perfect throw, too, really. That's what you want. You want it on that side of the plate so it makes it easier to tag. Well, it does look like he was expecting more of a shoulder high hop. Yeah. He just didn't get the glove up right. high enough. But man, Morales would have been out by five steps. Yeah, just mis misread the hop. Happens good for the Royals. Escobar struck out in the first inning. Green got him with a slider. That pitch right there. And now it's one and two. And he'll keep throwing it there if Escobar keeps swinging at it like that. Nice that the King has joined us tonight. Escobar looked like he's trying to poke it to right field. Still one and two. Although his uh, his hips and his hands weren't very well coordinated. No, but we've seen him get those off balance hits with the best of them. If I'm Escobar, I'm going to move up on the plate t towards the left side of the box. I'm going to move this way and I'm going to belly up on the dish. And that way, uh, uh, the meat of my bat gets a little bit more of that slider. And then, you know, you got to be cognizant of him coming in with a sinker. but. He's going to stay away on him like that. You can cheat a little bit. Tried to sneak a fastball by him. One and two. Did you walk two guys in the to start off the end and you're asking for trouble. Any kind of single is going to score Dyson from second. Nobody holding him on. He's got a huge lead out there. And it's really added to Green's pitch count. Here's number 45. And we're only in the second inning. Back to the slider. Escobar saw it coming. Two and two. Full count. The more green falls behind in the count, the more pressure it is for him to find some of the more of the plate. And Escobar, you know, anything close, he's going to be hacking at it. Their outfield is playing Escobar to the opposite field, infield straight up. Esky likes to put that ball right there in that right center field. 
And he drops it into left center field to drive in two. So the Royals have done it again. They get a gift from the opponent and they turn it into a big inning. You're almost better off staying firm with Escobar and like I said it puts pressure on you to find that the throw a pitch out over the plate in Escobar he's the king of the booty knock that is a is a patented swing by Escobar backside falls out head stays on the ball pitch down in the dirt down low he he just doinks it in there and, and I'll tell you he could be a very tough out up there at the plate. We all know he doesn't walk very often, but he also doesn't strike out very often. And now Moustakis, he doubled in the first inning, hitting the gap in right center field. And the Tigers thought that Escobar might go. Green looked like he may have gone with a slide step. If you want the runner to go, you don't normally go with a slide step. He's not going to go unless he gets a good jump. Yeah, and right now, uh, I'd be surprised to see Escobar go because let's see if Moose can tag him again. Cutter is high, 2-0. Oh. Let's take a look at this swing. Okay, Escobar sees it. It's out over the plate, but see how that back leg drops. Okay, that's nice. The backside falls out, and he's able to keep his head and, and eyes and hands right on the ball. Right here is a great spot of his eyes. See that? His, his eyes are right on that, and he stays on it most of the time. Two and one. Morales walked, Gordon walked, and then Green got a couple of harmless outs on a pop up from Perez, a fly out from Infante, and then Dyson drove home Morales on a ball that the catcher, Salta Lamacchia, just missed. And now Escobar runs and Moustakis hits it a mile high into shallow center field. And Anthony Ghost is there to make the play. Three runs on only two hits, which includes the first hit of the 2016 season for Gerard Dyson. Welcome back, Gerard and Escobar. Nice piece of hit. Escobar was a big contributor there knocking in a couple runs. He's telling his teammates right here how he did it. This is in between innings. You know Ventura's doing his warm up pitches but his teammates want an explanation. All right. This is what I'll do next time. <laughs> and then here it is. It takes skills to do this folks. Look. 
off the end of the bat. Look at look at the vibration on that bat with that shot. And Escobar wills it to touch outfield grass. Anthony Ghost, the number eight hitter, will lead off. Ventura has retired six of seven with three strikeouts to begin his night. And now a changeup makes it one and one. Ghost is getting an opportunity in center field with Cameron Mabin on the disabled list. Good breaking ball makes it one ball and two strikes. Ghost got a big opportunity last year to be the Tigers regular center fielder after all those years with Austin Jackson and then Cameron Mabin who actually came up through the Tigers system traded back to the Tigers our University of Kansas Hospital injury report broke his left wrist in his very first spring training at bat so he's on his rehab assignment with Triple A Toledo he was with the Braves and before that San Diego before that the Marlins and before that the Tigers over the mound over second base and into center field Anthony Ghost is on to begin the top of the third. Yeah you know if you're Anthony Ghost and you know you just put in a, a year as an everyday starter you're you're hoping that your organization wants you to be the guy next year but then they go out and they make a trade for a center fielder. Sometimes that'll really get your dauber down and you'll get a little bit bummed but not Ghost. Ghost is like you know what hey as long as I'm on the big league roster and I can help the team win. That's what I want. He's a nice player. He can do some good, good things. He's got good speed. He's got a really good throwing arm. Good range in the outfield. Just wasn't consistent enough, I don't think, for the Tigers to be an everyday guy. Jose Iglesias takes a strike. The Tigers were happy to have him back last year. One of the more dynamic shortstops in the league. He missed the entire 2014 season with stress fractures in both legs extremely bad shin splints yeah and I, I had a chance to talk to him before the game about two years ago and, and how rare that was and having had a stress fracture in one of my shins during my career it wiped me out for four months during the season I understand but but to have it all have him on both he said he overtrained and he ran on hard ground and that was too much. And you know, he, to miss an entire season, uh, that's almost unheard of. I've heard of. Sprayed foul, still 0 and 2. Well deserved high fives. Yeah, that's kind of a throwback jersey. One and two. Back to Ventura. No outs. Ventura thought Terrence Gore was running from first to second base. <laughs> well, just a little too fast. Esky's telling him we had more time. And you know, what you want is one out for sure. So Ventura's a good athlete, but he didn't quite have his feet underneath him. And he threw it to the wrong part of the bag. I mean just just rushed it. Had a chance to take a semi crow hop. You may not even get two on that. It's okay. Just get one out. Mm -hmm. and, you know we we know that he's wound tight. But he hasn't shown it. When it comes to delivering the ball though that's been good. So two on for Ian Kinsler. Well, let's see how he handles his own throwing error. It's a fielder's choice, error one. 
Kinsler gets jammed. Kane gets behind it, no tag. I remember when Ventura pitched on Wednesday at the Astros, he gave up that home run to Jose Altuve, and you commented that you could just tell in the way he handled it and his body language that it was significantly different from last year. Right, he would have taken that personally last year. How dare you hit a ball 450 feet on me? But instead, when the ball was hit, Altuve looked for the fight of the ball, and he looked right at Ventura, and Ventura turned away and did not even make eye contact with him and just went on about his business. Said, okay, you got me. Got a new baseball and yep. just moved on. So let's go. And, and that's a sign of maturity. And, you know, in Joel Goldberg's report, he just gave us a, in the first inning, talked about how Dave Island said, look, last season he finished strong in the second half. He was under control towards the end of last season, so it's not something that's all of a sudden happened this year. When, when you have his weapons, his three pitches, and you can harness that energy towards your pitchers and towards Salvador Perez, you're a potential Cy Young Award winner with his kind of stuff. Believe it. This kid has that kind of future. He struck out Upton with a breaking ball in the first inning. And now falls behind two balls and one strike. I remember his big league debut and his little glimpse into what he's capable of mentally. He walked the first hitter on four straight pitches. Like, oh boy, here we go. Then he got a comebacker, turned it into a double play, and struck out the next hitter. And it was impressive. I mean, it was something we talked about that night, the week after that, the month after that. That, yes, he pitches with emotion. But he also has some poise, and we saw it in the very first inning of his big league career. Ghost is at second base, Iglesias is at first. Jammed, and he drops it out into right field. Ghost will be held at third as Dyson almost ran to the infield dirt to get that ball. So the bases are loaded with one out. Middle of the order coming up. It's a running hard two seam fastball running in on him. And uh, Upton State kept his hands inside the ball. Ball's jammed him, but he's able to flare it out there in the right. First plate appearance with the bases loaded this year for Miguel Cabrera. Change up and he went right back to the pitch he used to strike out Cabrera in the first inning. Great idea. That's that change up goes down and in. He wants to roll up a double play. Throw it again. 0 and 2. And that time with a little slide step. Two different looks, same pitch. Can he triple up on it? And that was a straight, that had a little bit more of a straight change up look to it than it was the previous one that had some down and in movement. Now Salvi wants it way upstairs, and it was, but not tempting for Cabrera. Tigers gave the Royals a gift in the second inning with a misplay. The Royals turned it into three, and now the Royals are giving the Tigers a gift. Bases loaded, one down. Cabrera lays off the changeup, two and two. Pretty much straight up outside, uh, excuse me, outfielders, a little bit opposite field. And from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. We saw it in his last start against Houston, similar situation. 3 and 2 count. What's he going to go with? He's going to go with the pitch that, that he feels the most confident with and could be the changeup. We'll see. Got him again. 
Cabrera asked if that's a strike, meaning was it in the strike zone? Huge strikeout for Giordano Ventura. Poise, confidence, execution, conviction of your pitch. What do you feel the most confident with that you can get the best hitter in the planet out on? A 400 career hitter with him loaded. Great sequence of pitches there. And now Victor Martinez, he flied to the warning track in right field his first time up. Believe me, the rest of the Tigers hitters are all saw that and they're like, wow, you got you got our best guy in the in, in the most opportune situation here with a 3 2 changeup. We got our work cut out for us. If he can get if Ventura can get out of this inning. It'd be huge. Change nice. up popped up. Hosmer wants it. Ventura gets out of it. So it was a gift. Ventura giveth and Ventura taketh away. <laughs> he's, he's phenomenal. Excellent job. Great change. The pop up. Let the gold govern. Many years by both volunteering and donating money. In 2007, she lent her expertise in accounting and joined the Finance Committee. And then in 2008, joined the Board of Directors. And under her leadership, Jody has been a tireless advocate for Wayside's mission and has led them through a capital campaign and shelter renovation. Jody Robinson sitting in the Buck O'Neill Legacy seat at tonight's game, appropriately on Dog Day at the K. Or dog night at the K. Bark at the park's okay too. They're all thrilled to be invited. They watch the game at home with their owners, you know. I mean, so they know what's going on. Kane Hosmer and Morales to face Shane Green, who just threw his 54th pitch, and he falls behind Kane 3 0. Green walked Morales, and then he walked Gordon. Setting up the Royals three run second inning. And that's ball four. Another leadoff walk. You know, everyone remembers that the Royals won the division last year. Most people remember that the Twins finished second, but how many people remember that the Tigers were in last place? They had won the division four straight years with a lot of weapons, but their pitching was superb. 
And then last year really dropped off team ERA 4.64 and their starting rotation in particular 4.78 as a group. Anibal Sanchez had the worst season of his career. Justin Verlander's really had back to back off years. Rich Doobie is the new pitching coach. Jeff Jones had been there for several years. And so the Tigers feel like they're healthy offensively, healthy defensively. And now they'll just see about their pitching this season. Fouled away by Hosmer, 0 and 2. Well, as far as did anybody really realize that they finished last? Well, Mike Illich, their owner, did. And he went out and opened up his purse strings and invested in some players, some pitching, and hoping that that's going to help this Tigers team get back in it. Can't be a comic book there. <laughs> Pouring over some scouting reports. Right to Iglesias. Flip to Kinsler. And Kinsler, that was not an easy play for him. 6 4 3. Tough hitting luck for Eric Hosmer. Two down. Let's go back to Joel. Well, guys, Rusty Kuntz, he suffered a bit of an injury on Sunday in Oakland, but nothing new for him. He, he's like a head, shoulders, knees, and toes of injuries. I had him go through it. Right eye, those were cataract, uh, cataract surgery last year, bicep tendonitis, right shoulder issues, bone chips in his right elbow, broken left forearm, he says, thank you, Salvi. That's when Salvador hit him in batting practice a couple of years ago in Cleveland when his, his uh, forearm was just hanging out beyond the screen. No cartilage in his left knee, bone spurs in his right ankle, and now he says, I can add a Billy Butler bone on a ball on bone to my right shin. There we go with Kendrick Morales. And he says he stubbed his toe the other night, too. Other than that, how's he doing? <laughs> he said he's day to day. <laughs> Morales walked and scored in the second inning. And now he's on with two outs in the third. Think Morales, the professional hitter he is, can't see that hole on the left side of the infield. Excuse me. On the right side for you, but look at that. I mean, that's wide open. That's just, that was a pitch inside, and he said, I'm going to the left side of the infield. All the way. He was looking for that. So he's on with two down for Alex Gordon, who also walked in the second inning. Fastball with some movement. Apparently was low. 1 0. Well, when you're constantly throwing balls like the kid Green has been tonight, you're not going to get any borderline pitches. That's just how it is. Two balls and no strikes. Is at 62 pitches. So he's on an average of 20 pitches per inning. Yeah, they're making him work. And he's not getting ahead. And now 3 0. Thirty five pitches in that three run second inning which began with walks to Morales and Gordon. Well Brad Osmus and Rich Doobie the new pitching coach are talking it out right now. They're talking it over. They're already thinking about man who. Who's next. Because our guys has no command. Four walks. In two and two thirds innings. Remember this year at Kauffman Stadium Buck Knight is on Thursday. So come out. Save some money by enjoying delicious hot dogs and peanuts for just a dollar each. And you can get tickets now for Thursday Buck Nights. We have one coming up in a couple of days. 1-800-6-ROYALS or online at royals.com slash promotions. And remember if you. 
just turned on the game and you figured all right we're getting started wow it's the bottom of the third remember weekday games in April and September start an hour earlier. Boy would Salvi like another shot at Shane Green he batted with two on and nobody out after Green walked two in the second inning and Green got him to pop out to second base. You can almost just see Green as he stands on the mound he looks a little bit puzzled. He's he's aiming the ball he's he's trying to be too fine instead of getting out there and throwing it. He's got great life to his pitches. That sinker is a really good pitch for him and he hasn't been throwing it. Broke his bat one and one. That pitch right there is a good one that that hard inside you know get away from the pattern that you've been using and try something different right. Well it's a conversation that you and I had last week where. You know there's some guys that you and I feel and I know some pitching coaches feel that throw too many different pitches you know. You got two good pitches and two OK pitches. Well. Don't throw the OK pitches unless you have to. Right. Yeah, we've that, seen movement from him tonight that we haven't seen all year. Wow, man, he's got great stuff. Ooh, Salvi got a pitch up. Fair ball. Morales scores. Gordon's going to be waved home as Upton bobbled in the outfield. He will score. It is five nothing Royals and all five runs have scored with two outs. World champions doing what they do best. Make their opponents. Hurt with two outs, man. That, that's a backbreaker right there. Yeah, thought he executed a pitch out over the middle. Salvi reached out on the slider and lifted it, got it down to that line. Alex Gordon had a great lead at first base. Jersey is going to wait. Watch Jersey wait. He's going to wait, 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 wait until he sees it. Now you can make it. Good action by Jersey, the third base coach. He waited till he saw Upton pick up the ball. He took it. He actually traveled a little bit out there in the outfield. Well, he also, you know, I said he had trouble out there in the corner. He was expecting the ball to bounce to him, and it didn't. It hit the wall and just stopped. So he overcompensated. And when Mike Jerschley saw that, he waved Alex Gordon to the plate. Look at that. Four out of six with two outs tonight. So the Royals have turned three of Green's four walks into runs. And now Infante. And he popped it up. Cabrera jogs into foul ground. Infante is 0 for 2 with the Royals after getting three in the second and two more in the third. Salvi looking to drive tonight.
three in the second inning, two more in the fifth. All five runs coming with two outs. Here are our Jeep drives of the game. First pitch he's seen all year. Dyson turns it into a base hit. Escobar with a booty knock, knocked in a pair. And in the third inning, here we go. Slider left out over the middle of the plate. Salvi rakes it down the left field line. Two more score. Now J.D. Martinez is laid on a fastball. Martinez single to right against Jordano Ventura. So Escobar is driven in two. Salvador Perez is driven in two. And Dyson has an RBI. Martinez, Salta La Macchia, and Avilas in the fourth inning. Ventura now pitching with a 5-0 lead. Last inning with a 3-0 lead worked around his own error. He pulled it together and got huge outs with the bases loaded against Miguel Cabrera and Victor Martinez. Got J.D. Martinez to chase one out of the strike zone. One ball and two strikes. Hold on the ground to Escobar, who backs up for the right hop. And over to Hosmer for the out. Time for our sprint trivia question for the night. Are you ready, Hud? I am. So am I. We know Hud's nickname was the Wonder Dog. What baseball slugger was known as the hit dog? Wow. Let's see, we have crime dog was Fred McGriff. Chili Davis was Chili Dog. Wasn't it? Hit dog. That's, wasn't that Lance Johnson's nickname with the White Sox? Might be. The hit dog? Might take us a little while to figure this one out. That's a he wasn't a slugger. Fouled away by Salta La Macchia. Bulldog. Mad Dog, Big Dog, Wonder Dog. <laughs> they wondered about me. <laughs> What's the history behind Wonder Dog? I believe Chris Berman, the, the ESPN announcer, gave me that. Maybe uh, Lance Johnson was number one, wasn't he? Did he wear number one? Mm -hmm. I think he was one dog. Right. It's not not hit dog, one dog. Oh, I know. It's Lance Johnson. I just Lance Johnson was one dog. Yeah, you think no, of an, yeah that, that's that's it. Right. You think that's the answer? I think it is. The hit dog? So you think he had more than one nickname? Well, I, the hit dog I and the one. That, I thought it was Lance Johnson. The hit dog. Oh well, it might take us a while to get it. We'll get it. Mike Avilas right. takes a strike. He grounded out to Hosmer in the second inning. Well, it was obviously somebody who got a lot of hits over the course of his career. How about Bill Madlock? Was Bill Madlock the hit dog? Hmm. Did he go? Yes. David Rackley, the first base umpire, says Avilas went too far. And Ventura picks up his fifth strikeout. And another strikeout with his curveball. That's his second strikeout with his curveball. And he's had most of his strikeouts this year with that pitch. Tough one to see that rotation. 
I'll tell you that when you commit as a hitter, it's really hard to stop that swing. You're almost better off just just swinging. Hope you hit it. Change up outside to Ghost. He opened last inning with a single. Then Iglesias hit a comebacker to Ventura, who threw it away for an error. And then with one out, Upton singled to load the bases with one out, and Ventura got out of it. In the air to left field. Alex is right there. And with a 5 0 lead, Jordano Ventura has opened with four scoreless innings. the second two in the third all scoring with two outs and Shane Green is having all kinds of issues tonight control issues he has walked four. three of those have scored he is having pitch count issues as he's coming up on 70 after three innings and it'll be Dyson Escobar and Moustakis Slider for a strike to Dyson in his first at bat of the year. He singled to left field in the second inning and drove in Kendra's Morales. Now, the Tigers should have thrown out Morales by about 10 feet. Little pop up. Iglesias goes out and makes a play, just like the Tigers' first base coach used to make for many years with the Mariners and the Indians and the Giants. Omar Vizquel is having a little snack. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> I taught you well, young man. I taught you well. Right on cue. Catch it over your head if you can. Both hands up, highest point. There you go. Uh huh. He used to make that play on routine pop ups to short to take the sun out of it. He would turn his back to the ball, so he's essentially turning his back to the sun and wait for it to, you know, come over the top of his head. That's smart. Oh. 0 and 2 on Alcides Escobar, and all uh, Iglesias has to do to match Vizquel is get 11 gold gloves. <laughs> Good luck. With Escobar in the league. Grounded right out to Kinsler. Escobar is out. One for three with two RBIs tonight. Hey, fans, don't miss out on some throwback fun. That is Zuba Palooza Day at the K this Friday. This theme ticket will feature a one of a kind World Series champion themed Royals Zuba's pants and a game ticket for that night. Packages start at just $26. Purchase today while supplies last at Royals.com slash theme tickets. Folks, you don't want to miss it. These are outstanding. And if you also happen to be 
great thing about these is if you're also a Detroit Lions fan, you know, you can wear them during the winter also. <laughs> yeah, but hard to find a Lions fan in this part. How about this year? They got the world champion logo on it, Rhino. Good job. That's a swing. One and one on Moustakis. He has doubled and flied out to center field. Off the end of the bat. And Upton jogs near the line. And he's got it. So Green really needed that inning. Three up, three down. Detroit. Have to try to find a way for that pitch right there. That changeup, curve and fastball are all working. Mm. come up in the fifth inning. Remember to vote for the Royals Player of the Month at one of the seven Rally House locations in the KC metro area. All participants will be entered to win a majestic prize pack. Yeah, a lot of fans agree with you, ma'am. Jose Iglesias, the number nine hitter, leads off against Giordano Ventura. Jammed, and an easy play for Moustakis. One pitch, one away. Well, there's a hitter guessing fastball. He got it, but can't do anything with that. Talk to Dave Island, as you did too, during batting practice today. And, you know, I asked him about how often. Not just how well, but how often Ventura has been throwing his breaking ball in his changeup. And, you know, I said, is that just because he has better command of it, so he's throwing more, or was that a game plan going into this year? And Dave said it was part of the game plan because teams know by now that Ventura throws a fastball and he throws a very good fastball. So they go into the game geared up for that pitch. And it's one of the oldest baseball cliches, you know, pitcher has to establish your fastball. Well, if you throw hard like Ventura, they're going to be ready for that pitch early on. Kinsler strokes it into left field. He's one for three. So the strategy being, okay, you're established. Teams know what you have. They're going to be ready for the fastball. There might have to be, you know, a little reversal in thinking here. You might have to start establishing your breaking ball and your changeup early on. So they're not just sitting back and waiting for that fastball. Yeah, and, and he worked on those pitches, and, and and that's important. Now, Dave, let's keep in mind that he, from the, from the windup, he had him step back instead of forward like he was doing last year, and by stepping back, 
it gets his, the timing right with his arm slot. He's able to get his balance and over that rubber and it's working for him. But you're right. Still, even if you the report goes out that Ventura is using more change ups and curves, a hitter still has to look for that pitch like Kinsler. Kinsler was waiting for the fastball. He got it. And he got a base hit. I mean, it's, it's hard. He doesn't throw that many change ups and curves where you, a hitter can go up there and look for those pitches. But in certain counts, you can. Like Miguel Cabrera now, I'm sure the next time he sees him with men on, he's going to try to shorten up his swing and just try to put that change up in play instead of trying to do too much with it. Change up outside, two and one on Upton. We showed you his 450. One foot home run from earlier this year. Here's our Kubota power stats. Look at this average home run distance among active players, and only Matt Holiday by one foot hits longer home runs on average than Justin Upton. He hits them farther than Giancarlo Stanton on average and Mike Trout mm. on average. Close and safe. Ooh, we might have had him if the ball didn't pop out of his glove. I think the glove is on his body. Yep, Haas tapped his chest to Ventura saying, My fault. Three and two on Justin Upton. Had a couple of opportunities the past few years to play with his older brother, Melvin, who went by BJ for many years. They were together with the Braves and the Padres. How about this? Justin Upton was drafted first overall, Melvin second overall, different drafts. Both came up as shortstops, both got to the big leagues at 19. Both became outfielders and both hit their 100th career home run on the same day. That's amazing. Wow. He's already in his 10th season. Ventura walks his second, and now a dangerous spot as Ventura gets back into the middle of the Tigers' order. All right, Yellowwood bringing the lumber. You would expect Cabrera with the bases loaded hit with a 400 career average would bring the lumber, but nah, -uh. it's Ventura that's bringing the lumber here. I mean, he was all over the outside part of the plate, making sure he doesn't miss inside, and he got it done. Now that change up there that he struck him out on, if that's out over the plate, he hits it. But it's all about location, perfect spot. And that was with the bases loaded one out. The count was 0 and 2, then 3 and 2 before the 3 2 changeup. And I'll bet Cabrera wasn't just fooled by the speed of that pitch. I'll bet he was fooled by the thinking of that pitch. I'll bet he was thinking there's no way on 3 and 2 he's going to throw me another changeup. Yeah. It looked like it because he missed it by a pretty good margin. Changeup is just outside. And then Ventura got Victor Martinez to foul out to first to get out of the third inning. And now first and second, one out to Cabrera with Kinsler at second, Upton at first. Sliced up the right field line. That's a fair ball. Kinsler scores. Upton comes around third. Miguel Cabrera has a double, and now it's 5-2. Well, you got me once, but you're not going to get me twice. And as expected, Ventura using, I mean, Cabrera using the opposite field. The ball's right down the middle of the plate. Home run power hitter looking to juice it out of the park, not McGrip, not Cabrera. Miguel is going to just stay inside of it. Perfect swing.
So Cabrera gets another chance and drives in two. Now Victor Martinez gets another chance. Fastball at 97 is in there. Victor fly to the warning track in the second inning with nobody on and then fouled out to Hosmer in the third inning with three on. Just inside one ball one strike. You don't have to tell the Royals that no lead is safe against the Tigers. They know that. Two balls and one strike. And the first time that maybe we're sensing a little frustration from Giordano Ventura, Salvador Perez noticed that. Cabrera looking around. He's not only looking for the infielders where they're playing, he's also, with one out, making a mental note where the outfielders are playing. Popped up on a changeup. Escobar wants it. Kane calls him off. Two down. Love the communication skills of Lorenzo Kane. Even when there's hardly anybody around him, he always calls loud and clear so everybody knows when he wants it. Outfielders have priorities over the infielder. Escobar was waving his hands, telling the outfielder, Lorenzo, I got it. But Lorenzo said, uh uh, I have an easier play on that than you do. In the dirt, ball one to JD Martinez. Great pickup by Salvi. He picked that ball up and looked at Cabrera and Cabrera. He went back second base with a sense of urgency because he knows Salvi will throw. Bounced away. Cabrera is not going anywhere. Two and zero on J.D. Martinez. A rare. Pitch got away from Salvi in the game on Sunday in Oakland. And nope. it ended up scoring a run. And nobody took it harder than Salvi. Mm -hmm. And Turret's been nowhere near the strike zone in his first three pitches with Martinez. Jared Saltalamakia. Is on deck. Now Ventura's walked two in the inning. And now two on for the potential tying run in Saltalamakia. Dave Island's going to go out and have a visit with Ventura. So while they chat, we remind you MLB is in full swing and Thursday night the Royals wrap up their series with the Tigers on FS1. Thursday at 530 where you can watch it live on Fox Sports Go. So Salta Lamacchia with Cabrera at second, Martinez at first. And with Cabrera at second base, even with two outs, anything hit to the outfield is not an automatic run at all. Outside. So he's Jared. Our guy is Gerard. Same spelling. He walked in the fourth and Ventura struck him out with a fastball in the second. That is over Infante and just like that with Cabrera running even with two outs that is not a run. So a break there for the Royals. 
Even with two outs, and we saw Mike Gershley send Kendrys Morales with two outs. Well, Dave Clark was not about to send Miguel Cabrera. And so the bases are loaded. Yep, Clark, as all third base coaches know, the outfield arms, and Dyson has a very good throwing arm. And he's playing shallow and would have gotten him by plenty. So Mike Avilas with the bases loaded, and that's low for ball one. Avilas has grounded out and struck out, and now Luke Hochaver, who's been the Royals' fireman this year, coming in in the middle of innings with a pitcher in trouble. He's warming up in a hurry in the left field bullpen. Yeah, Pintura slowing his, his tempo down and thinking maybe a little bit too much. So wants to go ahead and execute his pitches down the zone, use that defense here, get out of this inning. Most likely his last. Almost hit him. Two and one. Twenty five pitches this inning getting Ventura up to ninety six and now ninety seven two and two just an inning ago looked like it might be an easy night for the Royals with a five nothing lead Ventura got the first out of this inning on one pitch. Popped up, continues to use that changeup effectively. So he barely gets through the fifth inning, but he limits the damage as the Tigers get two and then leave the bases loaded. Whew. Trusty changeup, beautiful spot. Five two Royals to the bottom of the fifth inning Lorenzo Kane Eric Hosmer and Kendry's Morales. That's how the third inning started when the Royals scored two runs. They've scored all five with two outs. Three in the second. Dyson drove in a run Escobar two and then two more in the third on RBIs from Salvador Perez and three pitches. And down goes Lorenzo Kane. He is 0 for 2 with a walk. 
And for Green, that's just his second strikeout. Yeah, but coming after that one, two, three inning in the fourth against the Royals, might have found some confidence there. He's throwing the ball. It's just challenge hitters and we're trying to nibble. Eric Hosmer is grounded out twice. Once into a double play, which was hard hit right to Iglesias at short. That's outside, 2 0. Green was able to clean up his pitch count some last inning. Two balls in one strike. He was just at under 70 pitches after three innings. That's hit well into deep left center field. It is off the wall. Eric Hosmer is into second base with a one out double that gives him a nine game hitting streak and he's now reached base safely going back to last year in 21 straight games. A couple of pitches in a row you can see it's a four seamer and it's right down the middle you can't you can get it by him once maybe he took it but now he made a mental note of it great inside out swing. Didn't get all of it I mean Haas if he gets all of it it's going out of the park. It right underneath the 387 sign. Good swing. And another trip to the mound from Tiger pitching coach Rich Doobie as they begin to work now in the Tiger bullpen. You know, it was the second and third inning where he was trying to be too fine, Shane Green, and he, he wasted a lot of pitches with all those walks. The four walks in, the, in those two innings. And like you said, three of them scored. Blaine Hardy, the lefty, the former Royals farmhand. Drew Verhagen is the righty. And here's Kendry's Morales with Hosmer in scoring position and one out. Morales walked leading off the second inning and scored the Royals first run. He should have been thrown out. But as you saw that little highlight before this half inning began the throw from left fielder Justin Upton which would have gotten Morales by several steps just skipped past Salta Lamakia. And now Morales is plunked. Let's put two on with one out. Here we are second week of the season that's the first Royals hit batter. Brad Osmus remains in the Tiger dugout but in watching him he just gestured to Salta Lamaki and said go out and talk to him. So I think they're just trying to kill some time and allow Hardy to get ready. For Alex Gordon. He's on the phone, just waiting for the green light. And now here he comes. So Chevy called to the bullpen for the Tigers in the bottom of the fifth inning. And it's Blaine Hardy to face Alex Gordon.
fifth inning. We remind you to cheer him on Thursdays in his fan section, Gordo Nation. For only $35, you get a seat in left field, a limited edition Charlie Hustle brand t shirt, and an Alex Gordon. Alex walks to the plate with two on and one out. And we remind you to cheer him on Thursdays in Gordo Nation, his very own fan section. For only $35, you get a seat in left field, a limited edition Charlie Hustle brand t shirt, and an Alex Gordon big head. That's coming up in two nights. Royals.com, 1 800 6 Royals for tickets. It's Blaine Hardy out of the Tigers' bullpen. Finesse lefty. Not overpowering with his fastball. 86 to 90. Slider curve change. He's got a big breaker, big curveball he'll use on Alex, especially after getting ahead 0 1. Curveball hangs high. One ball, one strike. Alex has walked twice and scored both times. Driven in by Alcides Escobar in the second inning and by Salvador Perez in the third. He has Hosmer at second, Morales at first. And that breaking ball is in for a strike. Blaine Hardy was a 22nd round draft pick of the Royals in 2008. He spent five years. In the Royals farm system. And then he made his big league debut for the Tigers against the Royals two years ago. And he strikes out Alex. Three straight curveballs. And that's the second out of the inning. And each one of them were located in different spots. It was the second one that was hittable, called for a strike. That was a, a very nice spot there. Starts up with that overhand rotation ball coming straight down to the bottom of the knees and the bottom of the zone. I see more fastball changeup combinations, or he could backdoor the curveball to Salvi here. Salvi in the second inning had two on and nobody out. And Green got him to pop out to second base. But in the next inning, Salvi got another shot at Green. And with two on and two out, he doubled, driving in Morales and Gordon. Blocked by Saltilamachia, 2 0. Okay, you want runners on, you got them. And you, the Royals have been struggling a little bit early with the 213 average overall with runners in scoring position. But tonight, with two outs and runners in scoring position, they're making the Tigers pay. That's right what they wanted to do. Salta Lamakia set up inside. Two and one. Royals are three for nine with runners in scoring position. They have scored all five runs with two outs. And here we are with two on and two out. Breaking ball hit to deep left field. That is gone. Salvador Perez has driven in five in the first five innings. And they've done it again right after their opponent scores the Royals answer. Look no further for a bus driver tonight in the opening game series against the Tigers than Salvador Perez. Wow. He take, took that breaking ball that hung out over the middle of the plate and put a great controlled swing on it. Strike two Infante. The Royals lead 8 2, and now they've scored all eight runs with two outs tonight. Dangerous. That's a backbreaker for their opponents. Perfect swing. Didn't try to overswing. 
That's the pitch there. I thought I'd see more of on Salvi. It was a change up there, that especially after coming in with a fastball, knocking Salvi off the plate. Little foul ball, check swing. Thought he would come back with a change up. Instead, he went with the curveball, and Salvi was waiting for it. Right over the middle of the plate. Steps has a slight hesitation because he's got to wait for the ball to come to him and just put his normal easy swing on it with a little uppercut. Second homer of the year. That's out to left center field. Ghost comes over from center. And that's the inning. Tigers have had a terrible time tonight against the Royals getting the third out of an inning. The Royals have scored eight. Salvi's driven in five and all the runs have come with two outs. Timely. Let's take a look at this curveball that he hits out. Now the ball's got overhand spin, but look at it. To wait on it, it's just all about eye contact. The hips are going to fly open a little bit there, and he's going to go ahead and have a nice follow through. But I love the balance on his swing. Check it out here. This is perfect, folks. Little leg kick there controls his upper his body from going too far, but everything's lined up perfectly. He's got a great little little straight leg there. The head position great. But watch this right there. Freeze it. Perfect, perfect balance. It's all about the the weight distributing distribution. Distributing. Distribution. The distribution. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. That's what that's all about. But you, if your if your weight's too far forward or too far back, it messes up your swing. But if your weight distribution is is right on, you might get hit a home run. Thank you for the help. You're welcome. And when your distribution distribution is on, <laughs> you're really good. Right. Chevy called to the bullpen. Luke Hochaver was warming up as Ventura was fighting to get through the fifth inning. So Hochaver gets a clean inning. And he'll get the eight, nine, and one hitters. Two balls and one strike with Anthony Ghost. Hoach's roll in the early part of the season, and it looked like it could carry through the regular season, the rest of the regular season. If everyone is rested, it could be Ned Yost's go to guy when he needs to get out of a bind in the middle of an inning. Or if someone needs rest, he can pitch the sixth, he could pitch the seventh, he could pitch the eighth. And I'm sure Ned Yost would be just fine using him in the ninth. Yeah. Got the call. Three balls and two strikes on Ghosts. He is one for two with a third inning single. Cutter goes strikes out and a good start for Hoach Haver in the sixth inning. Hoach can throw that anytime he wants to. That's his go to pitch that cutter and he, he'll keep that down over the plate but then at times he'll he'll throw it away 
on the corners mainly to righties makes it effective got a nice overhand curveball to go with it. Jose Iglesias strike one. Iglesias reached on what is a key play in the game tonight. He reached on a throwing error by Ventura in the third. He is 0 for 2. The Royals had a 3 0 lead. And Ventura had a chance for a ground ball double play, but he threw wild to second base. The Royals did not get an out on the play. The Tigers would go on to load the bases with Cabrera and Martinez coming up. Ventura struck out Cabrera and got Martinez to foul out to first. You could just see how quick he was turning. And then he went ahead and started hitting his spots, hitting his corners, got the pop up, got out of it. Right to Escobar. Two down. And now Ian Kinsler, one for three with a run scored. Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard in the last two years. Nobody has more multi hit games than Ian Kinsler. More than D. Gordon, who won a batting title for the Marlins last year, more than Jose Altuve, who has had 200 or more hits the past two years. And more than last year's AL MVP Josh Donaldson. And the key for Kinsler has been to stay healthy. He has not been on the disabled list the past two years and he had a tough time staying off the DL his last several years with the Rangers. He's a solid ball player. He, it's as solid as he's as solid as they come. Good, great defender on defense too. Uh, he gets to balls, good range, makes all the routine plays. But with that bat in his hand, he's dangerous. Very little movement, has an, an easy swing, doesn't have a lot of perky jerky motions. He doesn't move around a lot. He takes his hands right to the ball, and as a result, he's really worn out. The Royals 317 in his career but last year he hit 324 off the Royals. I mean he's this guy he's a thorn in the Royal side. Anything middle in. He's, he usually does something with it. Good pitch by Hoach. That ball stayed down. Kane makes a play in center field so Hoach Haver has a very good sixth inning. Three up and three down.
There's the George Brett statue out in right field in the outfield experience. And I'm sure George is happy with the way the Royals are swinging the bats tonight. Eight runs, seven hits. And for the most clutch hitter in Royals history, he's watched the Royals score all eight runs with two outs. And here we are in our Sonic Slam inning. Our contestant is Robert Lund from beautiful Lee Summit. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Robert wins $800. If the Royals hit a grand slam, Robert wins $25,000 from Sonic and the Royals. Dyson, Escobar, and Moustakis. Curveball for a strike from Blaine Hardy to Dyson, who drove in a run in his first at bat. He came off the disabled list before the game tonight, and he also scored in that inning. He's one for two. Two balls, two strikes. See if the Royals can't set him up for Robert. If somebody hits a big slam. That'd be great. Dyson looks good. Swings are controlled. Talking to him today a little bit before the game, as before he went got in the batting cage. I said, Dice, did you pay for a spread? In baseball language, that means did you buy dinner for your whole team? He said, absolutely. Dyson grounds out to Cabrera. One down. Let's bring in Joel. Guys, before the game, beautiful moment during Royals batting practice as a woman by the name of Teresa Thayman and her husband, David. They're in from Joplin, and Teresa is over at KU Med receiving radiation treatments. She's battling thyroid and skin cancer, and she held up a sign. I traveled to KC for cancer treatment and to meet Salvi. Well, Salvi brought her down onto the field, gave her a big hug, signed a baseball for her, and in talking to her after that, she was in tears, tears of joy. She couldn't believe, almost speechless. She's getting ready to have surgery next week. She had cancer when she was a young kid. She had been cancer free for years and years and it's back and she said it's the Royals that give her that fight every single day that have her believing that give her joy and it's Salvador Perez and that smile that make her so happy. Beautiful moment before the game with Salvador Perez. And now Salvi goes out tonight and hits a home run and drives in five runs. It's the things that you can do for people away from the field, away from the playing field that, that really make a difference. Memories are made every day, especially for those who really look for strength. And the players are willing to give, and the Royals are the best at that. They, they really have a knack for their fans. And anything they can do to help them, they do it. Very, very fresh group of young world champions. Mike Moustakis launches it foul to the right field side. Hips flew open just a tad too soon. One and one facing Blaine Hardy. He came on with two on one out in the fifth inning. He struck out Alex Gordon. But hung a curveball to Salvador Perez who hit a three run home run. Two balls and one strike. So the Royals nicked. Starter Shane Green for seven runs and four and a third. He walked four and three turned into runs. He also hit a batter and that turned into a run. Two and two on Moustakis. Just nicked it foul. Hud mentioned it that Hardy is a finesse lefty. In the Royals farm system, he was a fastball slider pitcher. But then to the Tigers, they wanted him to be more of a finesse guy and mix in a curveball, and that's what got him to the big leagues. And he's thrown some good curveballs tonight. He's also thrown one bad curveball. But for the most part, he's put that breaking ball where he's wanted tonight. Yeah, you see that curveball as a hitter. You see it up around the shoulders, around your head. You know that's going to be, be hittable when it comes down. 
It's the one that starts off around the belt. It's the one you want to try to lay off of. But hitters see that curveball really good. Chopped out to Kinsler. And Hardy has a quick bottom of the sixth inning. It is Bark at the Park. And with that in mind, we will answer our trivia question when we come back. The Royals lead 8 2 at the end of six. And our sprint trivia question for tonight. HUD's nickname was Wonder Dog. What baseball slugger was known as the Hit Dog? Go ahead, HUD. You know the answer. Mo Vaughn. Good question, fellas. And he could hit. Good guy, too. Great in the community. Were you with the Angels when he yes. signed as a free agent? I was. And the first game. At home, Mo went for a pop up down the first base line and he fell into the opponent's dugout. Now, he, did, he didn't injure himself too badly, but he twisted his ankle. And the next day, they had railing up hmm. to protect their investment. Danny Duffy takes over in the top of the seventh inning. Yeah, he was not what the Angels. Had hoped he was going to be after some huge years in Boston. He was a lot of fun to watch. Oh man. Duffy will get Upton, Cabrera, and Martinez with a six run lead. And he jumps ahead of Upton. No balls and two strikes. Fastball at 98 on that last pitch from Danny Duffy. Well, we've been seeing him in the mid to upper 90s this season, consistently 97. 96 97 he's got 98 in his tank there's no question about a big rolling slider and some occasional change ups. Ninety nine. Yikes. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> the Royals yeah, just Randy Johnson yeah, out there. They just keep bringing him out of that pin. One after another one of the strengths of the team. Two and two on Upton. He singled in the third inning and then walked and scored in the fifth. Giordano Ventura went five. He gave up three runs. Luke Hochaver turned in a scoreless sixth inning. Strike three called 98 at the knees over the inside. On the topic of the Royals bullpen we want to send out some congratulations that's Royals pitcher Dylan G. 
who was placed on the paternity list before the game today. He is back at his home in Fort Worth. That's his wife, Carrie Ann, his son, Hudson, and now baby Charlotte. So little Hudson has a baby sister. So congratulations to Dylan and Carrie Ann back in Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> I saw Dylan with his son on the uh, sitting on his bag as he was walking out of the hotel in Houston and his son was sitting on there to get a little piggyback right on the back. <laughs> it was so cute. It was I wish I could have gotten a shot of that. So Miguel Almonte is here in the Royals bullpen chatting with Wade Davis and taking in every single word. He'll be here so long as Dylan G is back with his family. Yeah, some mentoring going on. Look at Wade Davis. Invaluable instructions there. Still 0 2 on Cabrera. He drove in two in the fifth inning. He turned a 5 0 game into a 5 2 game. And then the Royals, doing what they do, answered in the bottom of the fifth with three to take an even bigger lead. Tigers have left the bases loaded twice tonight. They had the bases loaded with one out in the third. Ventura got through that. And then they left the bases loaded after scoring two in the fifth. Got him. Yeah, That's man. a third time Miguel Cabrera has struck out. And he's cursing himself as he goes back to the third base dugout. Yeah, look, don't be so hard on yourself, Miggy. That is some 98 with a slider that's Back leg door, back legged him there. That that was a really a tough pitch to even try to make contact with, and he knew it. Great pitch by Duffy. The last time Miguel Cabrera struck out three times in a game against the Royals was eight years ago. Really? 2008. Wow. Fouled away by Victor Martinez. One ball and one strike. Giordano Ventura got him twice with excellent changeups. And none more important than in the third inning with the bases loaded. And now Duffy got him with that curve, slurve, whatever you want to call it. Last year, and we're talking about the whole season, Miguel Cabrera struck out three times in a game once the whole year. Not against the Royals, against everybody. That's it's just amazing and, and for the first game of the year for the Royals to do that to him. That's a little bit demoralizing but you really when he got when Ventura struck him out with the bases loaded that hurt the Tigers. Right center field that's going to be down. Dyson cuts it off deep. And with Martinez knees, that's just a two out single. Don't forget to get your copy of the updated version of Dayton Moore's book, More Than a Season, now with two new chapters. The book explores the intersection of faith, family, and leadership, and the process of rebuilding the Royals. 100% of book sales support Dayton's charity, See You in the Major Leagues. It's available at the Majestic Team Store. And autograph copies are available at the Royals Authentic Store. Or you can go to his website, cuinthemajorleagues.org. Uh, updated. Two more chapters. Nice. I'm going to have to read it again. Right. It's worth it. Let me see. Do you think those 
two updated chapters have anything to do with winning the World Series? I would say so. Because the book came out last year. So prior to the 2015 season. You would think that it might take three or four chapters for that baby. That was mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. But the book talks about this, the system. Scouting. How they find players. What the job's like for a general manager. How he incorporates everybody to work together to pull together in, in one direction. Pulling on the same end of the rope. You hear that a lot that term in baseball. Some guys are halfway up the rope and on the other end they, you know, they're all on their individual programs. But to get everybody in the organization and the players to do that takes a lot. Martinez walks. That's Duffy's first. And what I found most interesting about the book is that we have the privilege of being around Dayton all the time. And so we've learned, you know, little bits and pieces of, you know, what his philosophy is on this and what his philosophy is on that. And I've always admired how patient the organization has been. But to read his book and see where that the foundation of that patience comes from, you know, spiritual beliefs or things that he's learned from executives on other teams or things that he learned when he was a scout or when he was in the Braves front office or what he had to overcome in the early years with the Royals. Salta Lamacchia bats right handed and fouls it away. And you know the importance of family. How, how how important he places them in that whole picture and how humble he is you know he he's not a guy who's looking for all of the credit he's he's crediting everyone but himself very humble the guys looking for a lost foul ball yeah Dayton's always said take care of the team at home first because if that's in order you're going to be able to perform out here. And you know, Dave Dombrowski, who was fired last year as Tigers president, and he's now with the Red Sox. He gave Dave Dombrowski a lot of credit because, as I said, I've always been impressed with the patience. There were times where a lot of general managers, if they were in Dayton's chair, would have said, okay, look, this is taking too long. We got to do something else. We got to win now. And he didn't do that, but he credited Dave Dombrowski. And this is, again, this is one of the references where you learn about Dayton. Dave Dombrowski's advice to Dayton many years ago was do the right thing. And if you run out of time, then you run out of time. So in other words, stay come up with your process and stick with it. Stay the course. Right. And that sums up the success of the Royals. Both world champion managers or general managers. Two and two on Salta Lamacchia. Duffy struck out Upton. He struck out Cabrera. And then Martinez singled. Victor, that is. JD Martinez walked. And now two and two with Salta Lamacchia. That's hit well to center field. Kane's got a long run. And that's gone. A three run home run. For Salta Lamacchia, and once again, the Tigers have made this a game. Five home runs for Salta Lamacchia, and he has made the most of his opportunity with James McCann going on the disabled list. And now the Tigers have scored some two out runs. Wow, all of a sudden, after the two quick strikeouts, base hit, a walk, and a homer, and that, that was a, a, on his breaking pitch that stayed out over the middle of the plate Lorenzo Kane I could tell it was going to be gone as he just took a couple of steps and watched it fly over him. Salta Lamacchia put a charge into that one. Oh. He just stayed right down on it his head was in good position got some backspin on it. They did 415. Avilas. Hits it into the fifth row. Well, he was. It doesn't seem that long ago, but he was for many years one of the premier young catching prospects 
the Braves the Rangers and the Red Sox all felt that he could be a frontline catcher. And now on the team that decides he's not going to be a frontline catcher. There's a break with an injury and. He's made the most of it. Well what a pickup he's been. Five homers already. Wow. And now two balls two strikes. And they're back to work in the Royals bullpen. Kelvin Herrera. Hit well into deep right center field but Kane is there and he's got it. So the Tigers won't go away. The Royals have had a five nothing lead. They've had an eight two lead and now it's eight five stretch time at Kauffman Stadium. Yeah. That guy's having a ball. Here tonight, 8 5 Royals. Time for a premier Mazda game break. That's a grand slam from Bryce Harper. And that is only part of the story. In that inning, the Nationals hit four home runs. Jason Wirth hit a solo home run. Wilson Ramos hit a solo home run. Harper hit the grand slam, and Ryan Zimmerman. Had a solo home run all in one inning. Ooh. They can bring the lumber. <laughs> this is Kyle Ryan. Second lefty out of the Tigers bullpen tonight in relief of Blaine Hardy. It'll be Kane, Hosmer, and Morales. It's the third time tonight that Kane has let off an inning. Yep. Kyle Ryan. Not overpowering, but he's got 88 to 93 with his fastball, a curveball, and a changeup. We'll also throw a cutter. That's what that one was. Glacius throws him out. So that was the story in Miami. Panera takes us around the league. Brewers got a run in the top of the ninth inning, and they snap Minnesota's four-game winning streak. Cleveland beats Seattle. Cleveland is now above 500 at 6 and 5. The White Sox at 8 and 5. They've lost 3 in a row. They lead at home against the Angels. As Hosmer slashes it foul. Eric with one out in the fifth inning doubled and he and Kendry's Morales scored on the Salvador Perez three run home run. Another ground ball to Iglesias. So both catchers 
have hit three run home runs tonight. Salvador Perez in the fifth and Salta La Macchia in the seventh. That, by the way, in case you're wondering, is the longest name in Major League history. 14 letters, Salta La Macchia. Wow. That name goes from hip to hip. Wow. Yes. On the back of his jersey. Yeah. And a strike to Morales. Ryan, this young man here, Kyle Ryan, has a little bit of a three quarter delivery. So that's some deception. Just a change up there. Now the ball doesn't come out of his hand like Chris Sale, but pitching motion is similar, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. That's a fourth time that Morales has been on. And he scored after reaching his first three times. And he's on with two down and two down. That's the headline for tonight so far. The Royals have scored all eight runs with two outs. Alex Gordon with two down. And a slider is outside. Alex has walked twice, scored twice, and struck out. Alex can be streaky at times. And when he's hot, he's as dangerous as anybody in the league. And a shot that Cabrera handles and goes to the bag. I was just about to say that Alex looks like he's just a little bit off offensively, but he's turned a couple of walks into runs and he hit that one right on the nose. Mm -hmm. But Cabrera makes the play. So the Royals have six outs to go on defense. Kelvin Herrera is down. Joaquim Soria is in as we go to the eighth. Royals baseball is brought to you by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. By Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit your Midwest Ford dealers. Dot com. Twenty six thousand eight hundred and eighty nine. People. 379 dogs bark at the park nice. part one that's awesome Joaquin Soria gets the eighth inning Kelvin Herrera had been warming up in the seventh when Duffy ran into trouble funded foul by ghosts that guy's about had it he's dog tired this is time he usually goes to bed So you said 
for our next Spark at the Park, you're going to bring your dog here. Yeah, I'd like to bring Simba. He'd love to socialize a little bit. Simba? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. As in the Lion King? That's right. And looks just like one. All right. And how old? He's eight. Okay. And a Labrador, you said? Labradoodle. Labradoodle. Yeah. Okay. Half and half. half so we won't have, we're not going to have fur all over the booth? No. After? Non-allergenic. Okay. He's a, uh, he would. Or shed. Yeah, he's gentle, uh, great with, with our, our kids. They just love him. Good with broadcasters? Oh, man, he'd okay. love it up here. I mean, I, I felt comfortable enough to bring him, but I had a couple of stops before I got to the ballpark today. It was just a bit too long in the car for him, so maybe in September they're going to do it again. I'll, I might bring him. Okay. He'd love to come out. Ooh. Right, we're sorry I wanted it, and it's three and two on ghosts. Bullseye, but just a little bit outside. Ghosts, Iglesias, and Kinsler. Struck him out. Tonight's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals baseball club. <sighs> Ryan Lefevre, Rex Hudler, Joel Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery. Jose Iglesias with one out. Our producer is Joe Vincius, our director Steve Kurtenbach, our associate producers are Sam Abramson, Al Broughton, and Dave Holtzman, and the producer of Royals Live is Brian Shapiro. Soria is hoping to bounce back tonight after taking the loss on Sunday in Oakland. He allowed a leadoff triple in the eighth inning to Billy Burns. And then Josh Reddick hit a sacrifice fly. And Soria took his first loss of the year. Yeah, you know, talking with Mike Jershley, the infield coach of the Kansas City Royals today, asking him how his off day was. He says, not good. I, I had a hard time because, you know, Burns, the, the leadoff hitter of that inning, he's a guy who uses the middle of the field. They weren't really expecting him to. Oh, man, good try. They weren't expecting him to, to pull or to slap one. That situation late in the game, leadoff hitter, lots of times infield's going to play no doubles and they're going to play a little bit tighter than the line. Hosmer was there. He just, he, he dove over the ball and, you know, they were concerned about Burns just getting a single because that's the kind of guy, if he gets a single, he's still second. He's almost like Altuve. You know, it's going to be hard to throw him out. And they caught him. It was just good baseball. I mean, the, the kid got a great hit. But Jersey was taking it hard. I said, Jersh, I said, you know, they, they executed. This is not. You know, the other team is trying to beat you, too, and sometimes it happens in baseball. All right, here's two huge batters in the game. Ian Kinsler and Justin Upton. If one or both gets on, then you're dealing with Miguel Cabrera. If Soria gets those two hitters out, the inning is over, and Miguel Cabrera leads off the ninth inning. So this is the key point in the game, and you hear managers say it all the time, HUD. There are certain guys in the lineup where you just know all the time where he is. How far away is he from coming to the plate? Little pop up. Hosmer couldn't get to it. I think that ball had a lot of spin on it. And he went to the railing and it ended up going down the stairs. You can see he always looks down to where he is, but you know that, that, that's a little bit dangerous there where there's no padding and goes right down the stairs. Be little tester there for him. Grounded up the middle. Iglesias stops at second base. 
And now Upton comes to the plate representing the tying run. Kinsler, knowing that Soria's pitches moved down for the most part, wanted to stay up the middle, kept his hands inside. Really a, a nice swing. Four seamer down the middle of the plate. He, he kept his hands in and didn't try to pull it. Had he, would have rolled into an ending, ending double play. So he's able to guide it up the middle. You can follow the Royals live on your phone and tablet with MLB.com at bat. Stay up to the moment with game day, video highlights, stat cast, bilingual access, split views, radio broadcasts, news, and more. Sorry, was intent on throwing the ball there and went to Infante even though he was on the bag. Inside to Justin Upton. Upton is one for three tonight. He has scored a run. He has faced Soria once before tonight and Joaquin struck him out. Soria would love to get the little 6-4-3 double play. Upton's grounded into a pair already this season. Soria not overpowering. Fastball go 88 to 92, 93. Curveball slider change. Tries to hit his spots. But not being overpowering, he's like any other pitcher. If you miss out over the middle, it's trouble. And now 3 0, oh, and guess who's on deck? And don't think you can just lay one in right here. A four pitch walk to load the bases for Miguel Cabrera and Ned Yost is not going to allow Joaquin Soria to get out of this inning. Herrera was warming up for a second straight inning. And he's going to come on to face Cabrera with the bases loaded in one down. One of the best head to head matchups of all of last year was between these two. Yeah, it was quite a battle. 99, 97, just a whole dose of fastballs, 100 even. It was amazing. We might see that again here. However, Herrera has a slider this year. He didn't throw it one time there. 
And by the way, it was the exact same situation as this one. Eighth inning, Royals by three, bases loaded, one out. Herrera did not have that pitch during that matchup last year. Right. So it's a it's a different ball game, and the advantage going to Herrera, even though he won that long battle last year, he'll that'll help him a little bit there. Especially nice tight slider to strike one. Ooh. Another one. Oh and two. So Miguel hasn't seen that slider. Maybe he's seen it on video, but it's completely different when you're in the box. Yeah, and it's a beauty too. So Royals pitchers have already got him three strikeouts tonight. Four would be unbelievable. Another one. It took him ten pitches last year. Tonight it takes three pitches. Two down. Well, like I said, when we, we were showing that 10 pitch at bat, 11 pitch, he, he threw fastball change ups because that's all he really had confidence in. But now he faces him here on the black slider. Same pitch, strike two. <laughs> and that one was a little better, had a little bit more of the plate, but he still was able to get Cabrera to, to pull off of it. Wow, that was really some great sliders. And by the way, the Royals have struck him out four times tonight, twice with the bases loaded. Now, Victor Martinez, this inning is not over. It's just the fourth time in Miguel Cabrera's long career. And this is year number 14, by the way. It's only the fourth time he struck out four times in a game. And that pitch looked pretty good. Yeah, it was right down the middle. One and one. Herrera is trying to pick up Soria. Herrera was warming up in the seventh inning behind Duffy, but Nedio stayed with Soria, and I imagine that has something to do with staying with the veteran, staying with the roles, giving him a chance, you know, to find his rhythm and his release point. But now Herrera is trying to help bail Soria out. Hit him. Oh man, I hope that didn't get him in the knee. Oh. And if it got him on the knee cap, I don't know if there's anything that hurts more than taking something right off the knee cap. Oh, that's hitter's biggest fear. And they don't have many fears when they go up there to the plate, but getting hit there. Is one of them. And you hope it was a slider. It, it, to me, it looked like a slider. Let's see. Yeah, he's on the side of the ball there. So 83. Oh, yeah. You know, if you nick your kneecap on the coffee table, that'll take you to your knees, let alone an 83 mile an hour slider. Not to diminish Martinez getting drilled, but sometimes the kneecap is like the funny bone. You know, at first, you know, it feels like your arm's going to fall off, or in this case, your knee is going to come apart, but that pain can also go away pretty yeah. quickly. Yes, yeah, great to see him get up, and walk down the line, and stay in the game. And as painful as that was for the Tigers, what it's done is it's put the tying run in scoring position. And that's Justin Upton who can run. And it brings J.D. Martinez to the plate who can hit. So this has turned out to be an inter interesting ball game. And now they're going to run for Victor Martinez. Andrew Romine will run and 
Martinez I think was going to stay in the game but Brad Ausmus could see that he was still in obvious pain and said well let's get some speed out there. Mm, man, I'll tell you that's a, a, a nice sight to see him run off the field with no limp. Now Herrera and J.D. Martinez fastball at 98 for a strike. J.D. Martinez has reached three times. He has a single. He has walked twice and he has scored a run. Bases loaded, two down. Popped up. Infante backs out. Dyson comes in. That's the inning. So it wasn't pretty, but it could have been a lot worse. And I think Herrera just told Omar Vizquel as he walked off the field and tell Victor Martinez, I'm sorry, the Tigers get one. Oils have scored eight runs tonight all with two outs. Miguel Cabrera has driven in two but he's also struck out four times. Salvador Perez has had the biggest night for the Royals. Without a doubt that double plated two and then he wasn't done in the fifth inning. Blaine Hardy threw him a curveball that just stayed out over the plate and he just raked it for a three run homer. Five stakes on the night for Salvador Perez and he wasn't done. Salvador Perez driving the Royals bus offensively but also calling pitches behind that plate. Drew Verhagen will pitch to the Royals in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Royals scored seven of their eight runs against Tigers starter Shane Green. They got another run off of Blaine Hardy. Then Kyle Ryan and now Drew Verhagen. This this young man here at six foot six two thirty has a lively arm and he's right over the top ninety to ninety six with a, with some sinking action that's his best pitch he's got a nice rolling curve Salvador saw and an occasional change up but this kid here he's got that great leverage at that height working down in the zone foul outside of third. Well Joaquin Soria didn't want to have to put the Royals in a position where Cabrera and the two Martinez could hurt the Royals. He did. And the Tigers only got one run. So not that Davis can just show up in the ninth inning and the game's over but now all those guys are out of the picture unless the inning gets really ugly. And he'll have two runs to work with this. Salvi chased a high curveball and strikes out one down in the bottom of the eighth. And 
up comes Omar Infante. His hitting streak could be on the line right here. He is 0 for 3, and he entered the game with an eight-game hitting streak. And he has hit safely in nine of the ten games he's played in. That was before tonight. Strike one from Verhagen. It's a heavy sinker there. I mean, heavy because of the velocity. Great movement down and in. So the Tigers revamping their bullpen, which was in great need of some new arms. That had some movement to it. 0 2. Verhagen is out of the Tigers system. Drafted in 2012 out of Vanderbilt. He made his big league debut two years after that. One ball and two strikes. Two and two. Full count to Infante with Dyson on deck. Vila throws him out. Two down. Friday at 6 o'clock on Hy-Vee Royals Live, we'll bring you a special one-hour pregame show on baseball in Cuba. We'll tell compelling stories of how baseball impacts human life just 90 miles up the coast of Florida, as well as how Cuban baseball has impacted the Royals. And that starts Friday at 6 o'clock on Hy-Vee Royals Live. Gerard Dyson in his first at bat coming off of the disabled list drove in a run and then he scored a run in the second inning. He is one for three. You know, for him to get that base hit on the first pitch he saw really had to help him a lot. I mean he's been watching his team I'm sure but also enjoying his playing time in Omaha. As he was telling me before the game and there's another hit. And now bobbled by Ghost. For a moment I thought we had a runner at second base with two down. Yeah. On contact a hitter that jammed him he, he can tell just like I could tell that was going to fall in for a base hit. And guy with his speed you know you can turn that into a double on if the guy doesn't bobble it with that kind of speed but. Gerard was just conceding a single there. Now let's see if he tries to run on Verhagen. Verhagen's trying to slow down Dyson by just coming set and holding that position. That ball is cut off by Iglesias. And Escobar is out to end the bottom of the eighth inning. So Wade Davis will come on. And Try and help the Royals begin this homestand with a victory. Saltalamachia, Avilas, and Ghosts are coming up.
here Mazda game break and tomorrow night same time it'll be Ian Kennedy for the Royals Jordan Zimmerman for the Tigers both teams identified those guys this past offseason gave them long term contracts some question those moves nobody's questioning those moves now as both Zimmerman and Kennedy have been outstanding early in the season. So tomorrow with coverage beginning at 530 and the first pitch at 615 and hopefully the Royals are thinking about winning the series tomorrow with Ian Kennedy. If Wade Davis can shut down the Tigers in the ninth inning Salta La Macchia Avilas and Ghosts. There's Zimmerman. Should be a great pitchers duel. Good start at the knees over the outside to Salta La Macchia, who turned this back into a game when he hit a three run home run in the seventh inning. The Royals led five nothing in the fifth. The Tigers got two to make it a three run game and the Royals scored three to make it eight two and then the Tigers got three in the seventh on the Salta La Macchia home run and one more in the eighth. Inside one and one. Davis loves the cut fastball. He'll go 90 to 97 with that fastball. He'll cut it and then he's got a four seamer and he's got a, a beautiful overhand curveball. Two balls and one strike. Two and two. Yep, Salton Lamachia looking out over the plate and with the movement on that slider, it looked like he took a little velocity off. He's able to really dip down underneath it. Fouled away, still two and two. 96. Davis wasn't his normal dominating self during the Houston series and he mentioned feeling a little bit of a dead arm and his mechanics weren't quite there but man 96 97 tonight that day off got a little life back in it one down in the ninth Royals pitchers have struck out 11 Tigers hitters tonight Beauty. That looked like that was his, his curveball. Now he he threw it hard, so it didn't have the, the, the type of break and the depth to it that he typically does. But it worked. And now the Tigers will send Tyler Collins to the plate to bat for Mike Avilas. Collins. Big, he's strong guy, takes a big rip. He's one for one as a pinch hitter this year off of Osmus's back bench. Pretty nice career numbers off the bench, too. Wow. Slice to left. Alex is there, two down. And that's a tough job pinch hitting because. You haven't had an at bat all night, and usually when you come in, you're facing somebody like Wade Davis, oh, that's right? The toughest job in the world. If you hit 250 as a pinch hitter, you're good. Just under 27,000 are here tonight. Many with their dogs. Bark at the park. Boulevard Royals Live is coming up after the game. Giordano Ventura didn't have a great line tonight, but pitched well and. Pitched out of a tough spot in the third inning. Davis throws a strike. Ho Chaver had a good night. Kelvin Herrera saved the Royals in the eighth inning. And then, of course, the big night on offense. Eight runs, five of which were driven in by Salvador Perez. One ball and one strike on Ghosts. And if the Royals can hang on, I would imagine Joel will get Salvi. But the question is, will Salvi dunk Salvi? Yeah, who who will get Salvi? <laughs> A little bit outside, two and one.
Three balls, one strike. Iglesias is on deck. Track of the count for a moment there. He will walk. So the tying run comes to the plate. That was a borderline pitch. I think he's just waiting to hear the call. Good speed on first. Now, you never know. Iglesias has a bat in his hand, but he's not the power threat right now. The power threat. Would be the guy on deck, Ian Kinsler. Right. And then the hitters following him. Glacius hit just two home runs last year. Good pitch at the knees. And he has just six major league home runs. None this year, but Kinsler has power and a flair for the dramatic. You better believe it. He's Davis not missing around here. Now he didn't quite get the grip that he wanted, so no throw. One and one to Iglesias. Breaking ball for a strike. So Davis has reduced the game to one strike. Yeah, that one was, was a little bit nicer. It had a, a little bit more of a, a break on it. Come in with a heater. Shallow center field. Lorenzo Cain's there, and the game is over. So it wasn't easy. But Salvador Perez leading the way on offense. He drives in five. Alcides Escobar drove in a couple of runs. The homestand begins with a KCW. And the Royals have now won four straight at home. And if you consider the postseason, the Royals have now won 12 of their last 13 games at Kauffman Stadium. Waiter, check please. And a beauty. Great night for Salvi. Esky chipped in with a couple of big RBIs. But the third inning, Salvador Perez Took advantage of that slide around over the middle of the plate and raked it down the left field line, scoring two Royals. And in the fifth inning, he wasn't done. He said, you know, that curveball looks nice and juicy. It's out over the middle of the plate. I'm going to put an easy swing on it, get some backspin on it, and a three run homer. Career high for Salvi and RBIs. And not to mention, the signals that he called tonight was also is just as well. And as we predicted, he is standing by with Joel. Yes, yeah, Salvador Perez would rather be on the other end of the Gatorade bucket. I think fans want to know who are you going to dump the bucket on yourself? Nobody's going to come, so <laughs> that's your fault. All right, five RBIs I had no choice. Had to get you out here. The fans are chanting Salvi right there. Best game of your career as far as RBIs go. Tell me about that night. You know, I just feel great. Uh, thank you for the fact for stay here, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Drew, clean that up. What's the rule there? No Gatorade for you. I don't even know. Hey, good thing you missed. <laughs> yeah, I got a little bit. It's all right. For you, anytime, Salvi. Five RBIs. Tell me about it. I just, you know, I just, I just try to do it in my yard and try to win for the team, you know. Try to do the best I can do to heal, to help the team to win. You're facing one of your good friends in Miguel Cabrera. He's up twice with the bases loaded, and you strike him out. What's the approach there? How are you able to do that against such a good hitter? I don't know. He's one of the best in the in the league, you know. We just tried to make some good pitch, and he missed tonight. How about the energy here, being back home, putting up all those runs and the excitement after a road trip? I love you, you guy. I love you. Thank you for the support. Thank you. There you go. And look at that, Selby. 
Salvador Perez, great night. And he just told me, Ryan, I got lucky by not getting more. <laughs> They'll get you, Joel. They'll get you. Well, they may have missed with the Gatorade, but Salvi certainly didn't miss tonight. He drives in five, including a three run home run. The Royals scored all eight runs with two outs. And look at Salvi, who's trying to pull Joel into it. Yeah, Joel got a little Gatorade on his sport coat. He showed her a lot of that, but great job. Showing some finesse by Goldberg. Look at, look at him. Oh, Salvi had him. <laughs> that would have ruined his post game. <laughs>